So this is part two of the MEP 802A excessive vibration investigation. Um, now as I'm going to show in a bit, I've gone through and taken the generator assembly apart. Found that there was a considerable amount of run out in a number of pieces and I'll show some pictures of what I went through to true that up. But today we're looking at the engine mounts themselves and I decided to go ahead and try and swap these out even though they are the correct part number for an 802A. I uh, decided to swap them out with another set just to investigate and I discovered something interesting. So this is the left side or oil filter side mount and I took this one out and replaced it already. Um, you can see that the new one's marked 802A. So I have the right mount in there. And when you lift up on this one, you can see that as the engine comes into contact with the washer, that there's a fair amount of compression on the isolator itself. Now let's go around to the other side. Now if we look at this isolator on this side, um, this is the old one, but I got the same behavior out of a different isolator. As I lift up on this, you can see, you know, hang on. There. All right, so you can see the engine lift off the washer as I come in contact with the washer and then let the weight of the engine down on it. Almost no compression. Like, so there, there's contact, there's compression. You can see there's only maybe five or ten thou of compression on this side so what we're going to do is stack some washers on this because i think that when this base pallet was made or the skid that this engine mount is not coplanar to the other engine mount and so when the engine sits on it this side is not compressing the isolator and therefore is not getting the support that is required and as this thing runs, um, you can't tell in the video, but this, this side of the generator set, so forward engine side and right side of the set shakes more than other points on the set. And it could be due to this corner being less supported and a torque occurring on the whole engine generator assembly as it runs. So what we're going to do is go ahead and stack some washers until the compression measures about even on these two sides. And then we're going to pin it back together and see if that improves the vibration. Tell me figure out the difference in the two sides. I'm using this depth gauge and setting it on a fixed surface on the top of the bushing and then a fixed surface on the bottom. And then I'm lifting the engine up and measuring uh, the difference in height of the isolator from fully compressed to free state. Now on this side of the engine, the, the left side, I'm getting about 70 thousandths of an inch compression. But on the right hand side of the engine where the mount is shifted, I am only getting about 20 thou of compression. So there's about a 50 thou difference. Um, now, I did some math on another engine I had just sitting on the bench and one of these isolators and came up with a rate of about 2,850 pounds per inch uh, spring rate. Now, it's not perfectly linear with a rubber isolator, but in the range we're talking about, that's pretty close. So what we're going to do now is stack some shims on the other side to try and even out the compression on the two isolators and then put this unit back together and test run it and see if that makes a difference. So I've removed both of the original isolators from this 802A and made an interesting observation. So this isolator is from the left side of the engine and it is from the bottom of the flange where it mounts to the top surface. It's between 970 to 980 thousandths of an inch. Now, this is consistent with 
The other two isolators I removed from a working unit that was in service. This is the right hand side isolator and this one is considerably taller. It is almost 50 thousandths of an inch taller which is only about the compression that you get here. So it could be that this unit is either missized or it simply has never taken a compression set because it's never actually carried a load on it due to the unevenness of the mounts. Okay, so we've gone through some experimentation, taking this washer and sandwiching it in the mount. We try washers um, 30, 40, 50, and 60 thousandths of an inch, uh, measuring the displacement of the bushings or the isolators each time I change the washer. At about 60 thousandths of an inch, both isolators are compressing approximately 30 thousandths of an inch, which is about the amount I would expect to see, considering that a single isolator under the weight of the engine compresses about 70 thousandths of an inch. So right now, compression on the two is roughly even. If you look, you can actually see some compression occurring on both isolators now. This side, same thing. You lift the engine up, bring the engine down, seeing compression. So now we're going to bolt it back together and test run this unit and feel out if the vibration has been reduced. So I got everything back together, got this one shimmed and tight, ran it outside and fired it up. And I can say that now this thing is back to a normal level of vibration for an 802A. Um, I would even venture to say that the vibration would be lower with batteries in this unit. I was just running it off of a NATO jumper cable. Um, having those batteries in the base would add a little bit of mass damper effect. So if you end up with one of these that seems to be shaking excessively and you've gone through the generator head, you've verified that you have the correct engine mounts and that the engine's in good running order, I would encourage you to check the compression on the two isolators to make sure that it was the same side to side. Um, the isolators should compress about 30 thousandths of an inch each under normal circumstances. Um, and now we know that it is possible for the engine mounts on the skid to not be coplanar and the the end result of this is that the pistons in, are going up and down on the center line of the engine but the isolators are off center at the corners of the block so if this thing's going up and down um, that force is going up and down in the middle of the engine and you're only supporting one isolator you're going to get both a vertical displacement so vertical vibration but now you're going to get this rocking moment where every time the pistons go up or down, the engine's going to be rocking side to side. And you could kind of see that on this one when it was running. The It just looked like the top of the engine was moving more than the bottom. But, and that's because of that exaggerated side to side movement. So hopefully this will help anyone else out there that has a vibration issue or an excessive vibration issue with their 802A. Good luck, guys.